You're listening to 1490 WBCB, Levittown, Fairless Hills, Trenton, and now heard as well on FM at 107.3 FM, W297CL, Levittown. I'm going to do a segment first. Okay. Uh, Thank you. This is the High School Coach's Corner, a weekly recap around Bucks County for all things on the hardwood. Let's go live to Sandy's Beef and Ale in nearby Langhorn, featuring the best sandwiches anywhere for the High School Coach's Corner. Now, here is your host, Chris Armour. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Sandy's Beef and Ale, the home of the world-famous Sandy Witch, as we get ready for our first Coach's Corner Show, a high school basketball show where we're going to put some teams in the spotlight each week. And tonight we've got the Holy Ghost Prep Firebirds with us. Council Rock North girls basketball in the house. And also, also here, the Ben Salem Owls girls basketball team representing. And each week we're going to talk to different coaches. They bring their players in. Just like we do with the Coaches Roundtable show, we do a high school football show here at BCB. And we bring the coaches in. We talk to some of the high school football players but we're doing the same thing now when it comes to high school hoops and looking forward here tonight great to be with you and a perfect time to start our basketball breakdown because we're on the other side of the holidays now the leagues are starting to kind of come into focus as far as who the top teams are uh, by the way the Ben Salem Owls are ripping through the SOL Patriot division on the boys side uh, the Ben Salem girls are also winning some close games and looking forward to talking with them in just a little bit. One thing that kind of messed us up tonight was the weather. All this crazy rain last night. We got two, three inches of rain. Most of the local schools canceled all of their after-school activities and postponed the games that were going to be played. Pensbury, they're playing Souderton tonight in boys basketball action in a game that was supposed to be on last night. Same thing for the Ben Salem Owls boys basketball team. We're expecting them to be with us tonight. Again, they are riding high on the top of the SOL Patriot division. But unfortunately tonight, because of the rain and the postponement, they are playing tonight in a game. So good luck to the Ben Salem Owls. And I, I, I think they're going to be with us over the next couple of weeks as we've got some more coaches corner and more teams to spotlight as we go through the next couple of weeks here at Sandy's Beef and Ale. Huge thank you to Dave and to Jane and to all of their staff here. They take care of us. They um, put together awesome sandwiches for all the guests that come out, the coaches and the players. Uh, by the way, they got all the NFL playoff action, the Eagles on Monday night. Usually on Mondays they have uh, music bingo, but because of the Eagles game, uh, that's going to be postponed for a week. But always something going on here at Sandy's Beef and Ale, the home of the High School Coaches Roundtable Show, and now the High School Coaches Corner as we talk high school hoops on BCB. And tonight on the show, want to ask our players to update my basketball lingo. I'm like an old dinosaur dude, and so like when somebody shoots a three-pointer, I say, oh, that was a wonderful three-point shot. And so I hope the players can update my hoops lingo here tonight on the show. And also want to talk to the players about their basketball aspirations, their hopes and dreams, what they're doing in the classroom, all of that stuff. This show, not so much about wins and losses, but about the work that goes into being on a, a varsity um, a varsity basketball program, the sacrifices that these players make, and how much they have to buy into what the coaches are trying to um, get them to do in order to have success out there on the court. You know, by the way, I, I the coach's corner sounds, a, it doesn't sound as awesome as the coach's round table show. Like the round table, you, you think of like the knights of the round table and like King Arthur and stuff like that. Um, we're not trying to put any coaches in the corner. Like that sounds like you did something bad, like you were bad. Oh, you got to go in the corner. Now this is the, maybe the coach's court because that also has like, uh, I don't know, it sounds like something out of King Arthur's court. Anyway, anyway, we're talking high school hoops on WBCB. We're going to be here the next few Wednesday nights from 7 to 8. Big thank you to Keith Noonan back at our WBCB studios, putting in some long hours tonight. And in just a moment, we're going to bring our coaches and our players up here. One thing I got to clean up 
All right, for anybody who's been watching Pennsylvania basketball high school hoops this year and been uh, perplexed about the foul situation, uh, I'm like the last guy to figure out that they totally revamped the uh, how they call fouls in PIAA basketball. There was a referendum in July, and the Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic Association decided that they're no longer going to have teams shoot a one and one That's gone. The one and one is done. And now they're using the rules similar to what they do in NCAA girls basketball, where they'll give a team five fouls each quarter. And then after that quarter expires, they'll reset, and the team gets five common fouls in the next quarter. Now, any shooting foul, of course, that's going to send somebody to the line for two shots if you're fouled in the act of shooting. But now any common foul, you get to the line for two shots after your team has committed five fouls in a quarter. And, uh, man, it was really confusing me. What the heck was going on? We need to update our our graphics on WBCB because we still have like the bonus and the double bonus. Well, that's a thing of the past. There is no more bonus and double bonus right now in Pennsylvania high school basketball action. It's a whole new system. You get five fouls per quarter. And after that point, every common foul, the players will shoot two shots at the line. And uh, I want to ask our coaches when we get to them in just a little bit, how that is changing uh, how they manage a game, um, how you how you try to work your way through a game. Uh, it does change the strategy a little bit. And again, with us tonight, the Holy Ghost Prep Firebirds. We got Coach Tom Heston with us. Also, the Ben Salem Owls girls basketball team and Council Rock North, the Indians, in the spotlight tonight. And we're going to talk to all of them in just a little bit. Again, the high school basketball coaches corner. And this is an invitation to all the local high school programs, you're welcome to come out. We want to lay out the welcome mat right now. And uh, again, because of the rain and stuff, some of the teams that were expected to be with us unable to do so. But if you're the coach of a high school basketball program and you want to bring your student athletes here to Sandy's, we welcome you. And uh, it would be great to highlight all of their accomplishments and talk a little bit about your program. That's what we're doing here on Wednesdays for the next few weeks on WBCB, the high school coaches corner. And again, any local programs, the suburban one league schools, we would love to have you join us talking about both boys and girls basketball here from Sandy's Beef and Ale, the home of the world famous Sandy Witch and the home also of Turkey Tuesdays. Get your, get your gobbler, with the turkey and the gravy. A lot of great stuff here at Sandy's Beef and Ale. And, uh, you know, we'll step aside, take care of a couple of quick messages, take a bit of an early break. And when we return, we'll talk to the Council Rock North Indians girls basketball team in just a little bit. They'll be our first team. They're going to kick off the coach's corner here on BCB when we come back in just a moment. Sandy's Beef and Ale has been serving famous hand-carved roast beef sandwiches since 1967. Sandy's Beef and Ale is located in the Woodburn Square Shopping Center next to the Oxford Valley Mall. Stop in anytime for not only the roast beef sandwiches, but also the patty, the tailgater, and the Cuban. Family and friends have been coming to Sandy's Beef and Ale since 1967. 2028 Old Lincoln Highway, the home of the hand-carved sandwich. At Penn Community Bank, we're not just your bankers, we're your neighbors. That comes in handy when you're purchasing your first place, refinancing an existing mortgage, buying a second home or investment property, or looking to tap into your home's equity. Whatever your situation, we pair the latest products, services, and technology that you need with the experienced banking professionals you want. Visit PennCommunityBank.com or stop by your local branch to find out how we can make your family's growth personal. Penn Community Bank. Here we are and here we grow. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Your day-to-day -day life is hectic between having to pick up the kids, make dinner, the countless other tasks that you got to get done. Rob's Automotive Van Collision is there to make your life a whole lot easier. Make sure you take advantage of their spacious waiting rooms, the large flat-screen TVs, complimentary coffee and muffins, and free Wi-Fi. So even when you do have to stop, Rob's is there to make you feel right at home. Give Rob's a call today at 215-826-9200 for any of your auto repair needs. 
Dion Square, located at South Oxford Valley Road and South Olds Boulevard, is a great place to shop and eat with the following businesses ready to serve you. The AutoZone, PA Wine and Spirits, CVS Pharmacy, The Hair Covering, Nationwide Insurance, Liberty Auto Tags, Smile Culture Dental, The First National Bank and Trust Company here, of Newtown, Lee's Hoagie House, and Pat Dion Beverages. This is Tommy Green from the 1993 National League Champion Phillies. And here's the pitch. BCWSA Water and Sewer customers, you have a Hand new and improved so option to pay your bill that's convenient, reliable, everybody and secure. Powered by Invoice Cloud, you can pay your bill 24-7 online, pay by text or phone, or sign up for auto pay to avoid fees for late or missed payments. Visit bcwsa.net to sign up or for more info. That's bcwsa.net. BCWSA, proven. We now return to Sandy's Beef and Ale in nearby Langhorn for the High School Coach's Corner. Once again, here is your host, Chris Ermer. All right, thank you very much. Back here at Sandy's Beef and Ale, the home of the world famous Sandy Witch. Saying hello to everyone with us at WBCB 1490 AM, 107.3 FM, around the world, streaming at WBCB1490.com and giving a wave to everybody. Checking us out on YouTube at WBCB Sports. It's the Coach's Corner. And with us now, the, the uh, Council Rock North Indians. And uh, getting us started here uh, is, is uh, our, our first coach of the night, Jack Kelly. Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you so much uh, for bringing your players tonight and for being the first guest on the Coach's Corner. I, I hope you don't feel uh, too nervous or too much pressure. No, I uh, thank you very much for having us. Uh, we're um, very fortunate to have WBCB offering this opportunity to our players. It's unfortunate that Nick Saban just retired, so I don't know how many people are distracted by that. But well, we're here. We're ready to go. That might, that might be your next move, Coach <laughs> Kelly. No, no. Move no. up to Alabama. I don't know that I can handle that pressure. I'm just going to stay right here in Newtown. Well, well, the show here on BCB is an opportunity for coaches to sound off to throw some flowers at the assistant coaches and all the volunteers that help to make their program successful and to talk a little bit about the players that you, you bring. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us who uh, you have with us tonight for the show? Uh, so tonight we're joined by Delaney McCaffrey and Franny Boyle. Um, both of them are senior captains for us and they are um, huge key pieces of our program, our culture, um, you know, next next week we hope to bring two of our other seniors, Ruth O'Keefe and Amelia Furman. Um, but, you know, there are four kids that we have representing our senior class who are also captains that just um, kind of the lifeblood of our team as far as creating a culture of togetherness, creating a culture of friendship. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. Well, before we talk to your players, Tell me a little bit about how that culture has developed this season for you and where you think uh, this season is, you know, coming up you guys have Avon Grove, Penridge as your, your next opponents. Yeah, you know, we had, uh, this is my second year at Council Rock um, as the head coach. We had some high turnover from last year, um, but I think one of the things that stood out was way back when um, we have a, back in the spring, we have a young team coming in. Um, you know, there was, I think, nine freshmen or so. Wow. That, a lot of freshmen. Yeah. Wow. We have, I can tell you for a fact that we have 16 freshmen and sophomores program-wide of a roster of 24. Um, and I think these seniors from day one said, hey, welcome to our team. And, you know, at the end of the day, you can't, in my opinion – you know, we can talk all the X's and O's, all the basketball you want, but if you don't have a team that's a close-knit group that really cares about one another, you, you're not going to be successful. And while we've taken um, – we've had some adversity that we fought in the beginning of the season, what we've seen is this group is committed to getting better and better, and I think it starts with how uh, close-knit they are and how, how they really want to look out for one another and how they want to do their best to, to – 
um, allow their teammates to succeed. Well, I want to mix in a Franny Boyle now. She's got the headset on. Yeah. So how do you balance out welcoming some some younger, some freshmen or younger, and also challenging them and holding them to a certain standard? Um, I think our senior class is actually really good at balancing between the four of us, like the more like come in, like welcome, and the like let's get let's get it together, like her and another girl you'll see next week are more like <laughs> like let's get it done and we're more like oh like team like great to see you all me and Amelia Furman so I think our balance is just good uh, yeah we're all very welcoming it's always been like that we love our team well Fran I want to put you on the spot and ask you to give us a little bit of a, a self scouting report <laughs> what are what are some things that um like the, the, the things that you feel like you bring to uh, Council Rock North as far as um, contributions you make for the team? I think the biggest thing I bring is like positivity, like uh, like te make the team a family kind of thing is probably my best trait. On the court, rebounding and screens are like my, like that's usually what I do. So like an in inside, a play. Like a physical presence for, for yeah. the team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I give myself that, but yeah. I <laughs> what What do you guys do off the court to come together and to create that chemistry that your coach was talking about? Create that culture. Yeah, our team's always had a lot of like. Uh, every season we have like six sleepovers, like big team sleepovers. Um, this year I think we're doing like bowling, but like we just do a lot of things outside of school, like as a team. Like even if it's not set up, like I hang out with a lot of my teammates all the time. That's pretty cool. I've heard about spaghetti dinners. I've heard about teams getting together that, yeah. and going bowling. But I think this is the first time I've heard about a team sleepover. We've, we're all over that. <laughs> it's our favorite. <laughs> and then Applebee's. They're also yeah, all big over. After half a win. Apps. They've, they've mastered the art of half-price apps. <laughs> so w what do you think the key is for you guys to um, build off of some of the momentum you have, to take the positives and um, – continue to move the program forward from here? Um, I just, th I, I hope our our senior impact affects the junior class and they keep up like the togetherness of our team. Um, I think the key is just to be close and like play well together for us. One, one of the things that Council Rock North does as well as any school I think and has a tradition now with the Athletes Helping Athletes program. Mm. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about um, your involvement there? It's, it says yeah. here you do some volunteering, get involved with, with them, and they, they'll bring out an honorary captain. Um, at least that's um, my uh, understanding, or uh, that's what I know they do. I don't know if there's additional stuff with athletes helping athletes, but it's a really nice gesture before the game. An honorary captain yeah. comes out, comes out with you guys, and gets recognized in midcourt. Mm -hmm. So... My brother is like Down syndrome, so I've always been kind of like better with that kind of stuff. Um, Has your brother been an honorary captain? No, he's in middle school, so it's just high school students. Uh, last year there was a girl with Down syndrome. Uh, when I was injured, I like walked her out and like helped her do stuff. Um, we have a guy named Peter. He goes to like every. <laughs> Uh, game that we have, so he's I very know. active. And, and you're talking about Peter Brill, who's uh, yeah, uh, everyone knows him. Council Rock North Hall of Famer, the, I think. The <laughs> mayor of Newtown, yeah, Peter he, Brill, and and with that, to that point, Peter is in the Council Rock Hall of Fame. Um, I didn't know that. And if I could just add to this, I think one of the um, one of the coolest things that I and I can speak on behalf of some of the other programs is when they have AHA nights for the different. Um, th they have AHA nights for some of the different sports. We participated. It was my first time ever attending AHA for, for basketball last year. Franny and Delaney were with me. There were several other of our students who were involved with AHA. And to it, it was really cool because we were there. Nishami was there. Uh, Council Rock South, uh, just different programs from within our league. And um, Central Buck South, I remember, was there. And it just – what stuck with me was – all these kids that you see as competitors coming together to help uh, uh, for a cause that's bigger than any one individual. And it was just a special night. Um, 
and, and it was something that we were really fortunate to be part of, and, and we look forward to being a part of it again this year. And, and leading the way in that regard has been Council Rock for many, many years, Council Rock North yes, and sir. Council Rock South, blazing the path for help, athletes helping athletes, and now a lot of other schools have also started to honor captain, honorary captains before each of their games. And it's a, a, a neat kind of thing, but uh, some credit deserved uh, for Council Rock, I think. It, yeah, yeah it, it's really it, – it's a tremendous program, and it it, it, um, it, it really helps offer oppor – create opportunities for um, – and bridge gaps for, for some of the students in our communities that might have some disabilities to, to take the um, – to integrate with regular um, ed students. All right, so uh, for any – I want I want uh, the players that are with us today to try to update my lingo. All right, like I'm gonna, <laughs> I, I'm about to be 50 years old. All right, I so might have like, the same lingo you do. I use <laughs> like all. Well, all right. How about Franny's gonna get Urban Dictionary? I need an update here. for. Um, all right. How about a block? Like a like a you block bl blocking the ball? Yes, you, a block. A block. Yeah, yeah that's like, what we call it. No, no. Is that what you're asking? Well, are I'm there any if other like any are there any other names or yeah, synonyms uh, for the, it? Yeah, any the freshest so? description of a like, block, like a stuff. Oh yeah, like you stuffed her. <laughs> yeah, she'll say, "Give me that." Th this is the thesaurus. <laughs> yes, part. you do. Yeah, that, that's good. Give me that. Yeah. A rejection. No, I just feel like it's a block. <laughs> I think you're good on that. <laughs> All right. How about um, a three-point shot? I think these are questions for Delaney that she. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. All right, Franny, pass that microphone over. Baton. Giving the baton. And we now welcome Delaney McCaffrey, a senior guard with oh. Council Rock North basketball. Delaney, welcome to the show. Thanks Thank for you. being with us. Thank you for having me. All right, so any lingo updates? Like, she shot a three pointer. Would you describe that in a fresher, more up to date way? I don't know. I feel like everyone just calls it like a three. Like a three. Like, you throw up this. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. I feel like you're good on the lingo for that one. I, th right. I think that is a good point, though. The thing that is is the celebrations for three have dramatically yeah. increased in recent years. Yeah. People um, say, like, boom. like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, boom's a thing. Yeah, yeah it is yeah. actually a thing. It is, yeah. Like yeah. The whole bench says it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, the whole bench, they, a three gets hit, and then they go, boom. Boom. Right. <laughs> so Delaney, so what are you hearing from your coaches about what you guys need to do against Penridge, against Abbott Grove, a couple of your upcoming uh, opponents, and uh, how to clean up maybe some of the stuff uh, that you haven't been doing as well as you, you'd like to? Yeah, well, for starters, I feel like um, turnovers. At the beginning of the season, we had a lot of turnovers, but we really turn like we're not having as many turnovers, so that's like a good sign. We still need to work on our rebounding, boxing out. I feel like that's everyone. But, no, like, we're definitely improving, pushing the ball, setting up in our offense, just, like, playing as a team. And, yeah, I think that we've shown, like, a lot of improvement since our first game to now. So, yeah. So, Freddie. Help defense. And Freddie was saying you're a little bit more demanding on some of the young players and, and expect this team to play to a certain standard. Yeah, I'm just, a, like, my whole life I've just been a really competitive person. And when people aren't giving, like, 100% at practice or, like, like, messing around, goofing off, I kind of, like, try to get people in check because, like, this, like, means something to me. Like, so I just want to get the best out of everyone and, like, get the best out of the season. So I just, yeah, I'm kind of, like, the bad cop to her good cop, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you care, it brings something else out of you. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, as uh, you guys work through the season, it seems like you're involved in a lot of stuff, athletics, you have a job, um, <laughs> volunteer work. Sometimes I marvel at how the players that are with us, whether it's a varsity basketball player or a high school football player, how you mix in all of the – got to have some, some um, good time management. Yeah. I, Well, I don't do – I usually do a job like when I'm not in season because I feel like that would be so much. But sh I think you still work. Like yeah. babysit. It, I feel like it just helps you grow as a person. Like yeah. for like the real world, like – like schoolwork, basketball, like it just really helps you. Like, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but like, yeah, like balancing situations. Like, it's it's hard at sometimes, but it's all like worth it in the end. I feel like. I feel like I need to know more about Nina's waffles. <laughs> we both work there. We yeah. both work there. 
A lot of our friends work there. Like, it's a very laid-back, chill job. It's a place in Newtown. I think there's, like, five other locations. And it's just, like, you can get a waffle and put, like, ice cream on it. <laughs> I like that. That <laughs> and sounds like good. And, like, uh, Sundays. If you come, we'll give you a discount. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Come to need his waffles, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> We're putting it out there. Yeah. Well, one Maybe of the I'll great perks uh, here at Sandy's, again, we thank them for hosting the Coach's Corner, a high school basketball show, is that they hook up these shirts, right? Underneath here, I have my high school football shirt from 2023, our round table that we've been doing for many, many years at Sandy's. But now Dave has developed a basketball shirt. So all of our guests, you guys are going to get our Sandy's basketball shirt, Can't Coach's Corner it. shirt, which is awesome, 2024. And uh, again, for all the coaches that are out there, we invite you to uh, highlight your student athletes with us uh, for the next couple of Wednesdays. We'll talk to more Council Rock North Indians next week. Again, thanks to Coach Kelly for being with us and hanging out, bringing uh, Delaney and Franny with us. Guys, thank you so much. And uh, thank you very good luck much. throughout the rest of this it. season. And good luck against Penridge and Avon Grove. And we'll find out uh, next week what's going on with uh, Council Rock North Indians and uh, what happened in this past week of high school hoops. In the meantime, we're going to step aside and take care of some more important messages and then return here to Sandy's Beef and Ale for more of the Coach's Corner High School Hoops on BCB. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beef and Ale has been serving famous hand-carved roast beef sandwiches since 1967. Sandy's Beef and Ale is located in the Woodburn Square Shopping Center next to the Oxford Valley Mall. Stop in anytime for not only the roast beef sandwiches, but also the patty, the tailgater, and the Cuban. Family and friends have been coming to Sandy's Beef and Ale since 1967. 2028 Old Lincoln Highway, the home of the hand-carved sandwich. Are you looking for a checking account with convenient access and digital tools that can flex to your needs? Then check out Penn Community Bank's Free Checking Plus. With no monthly balance requirement and no monthly service fee, plus all the handy banking services and features you want and need. Early direct deposit? Check. Overdraft grace? Check. Mobile banking and Zelle? Check, check. Visit PennCommunityBank.com slash free plus to learn more. Penn Community Bank, here we grow. Account and feature terms, restrictions, and conditions apply. Ask for full details, member FDIC. Your day-to-day -day life is hectic between having to pick up the kids, make dinner, the countless other tasks that you got to get done. Rob's Automotive Van Collision is there to make your life a whole lot easier. Make sure you take advantage of their spacious waiting rooms, the large flat-screen TVs, complimentary coffee and muffins, and free Wi-Fi. So even when you do have to stop, Rob's is there to make you feel right at home. Give Rob's a call today at 215-826-9200 for any of your auto repair needs. BCWSA customers, former Phillies pitcher Tommy Green here. I played on the 1993 National League Champs, so I know a thing or two about what it's like playing on a winning team. BCWSA has all the ingredients. They make it easy for their customers to get automatic updates by text, email, or phone anytime there is a disruption in your service area. You can even customize your alerts by going to bcwsa.net. That's bcwsa.net. BCWSA, your partner for a safer environment. BCWSA, proven. Dion Square, located at South Oxford Valley Road and South Olds Boulevard, is a great place to shop and eat with the following businesses ready to serve you. The AutoZone, PA Wine and Spirits, CVS Pharmacy, The Hair Covering, Nationwide Insurance, Liberty Auto Tags, Smile Culture Dental, The First National Bank and Trust Company of Newtown, Lee's Hoagie House, and Pat Dion Beverages. We now return to Sandy's Beef and Ale in nearby Langhorn for the High School Coach's Corner. Once again, here is your host, Chris Ermer. All right, welcome back to Sandy's Beef and Ale, the home of the world famous Sandy Witch. Looking forward to getting my roast beef sandwich after the show's over. Coach's Corner on WBCB and with us now the head coach of the Holy Ghost Prep Firebirds, Tom Heston. Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you for uh, hanging out, bringing your players and everything. Absolutely. Thank you for having us on here. Looking forward to the Saturday game that we're going to have on BCB. Holy Ghost Prep traveling to Fairless Hills to take on the Pensbury Falcons. Yep. Uh, is that a game that you've been looking at already, or you got some other stuff before then? We have uh, one game before then. We play on Thursday. Um, but Pensbury is one of the local teams we play. We're no longer in a league, so it's nice to get the local rivalries. Uh, Pensbury, Neshaminy, Ben Salem. 
Um, so Saturday would be a lot of fun. Well, uh, Coach, tell me a little bit about, uh, you're in your first year, you take over for legendary head coach Tony Chapman, and I was asking our video engineer uh, what his guess was for the total number of wins in Coach Chapman's career. I said, he coached for 45 seasons, so just try to do the math. What do you think his total was? And he said, I, you know, probably had about 500 wins. <laughs> I said, yeah, that would have been a, a pretty good career. Would have been a great career. But Coach Chapman, the, probably the winningest coach in PIAA history. I mean, he's got to be close. 928 wins for Coach Ch Tony Chapman as part of uh, the Firebirds. Um, stepping into some big shoes. <laughs> you could say that. Absolutely, they are. And you guys also graduated 13 players last year. Talk about uh, how those two challenges um, have made this year maybe a little bit difficult or um, some opportunities there for you. So obviously replacing Coach Chapman, uh, difficult, difficult challenge. Um, he's been a legend in Bucks, not just Bucks County, but all of Pennsylvania. Um, 928 wins is a lot of wins. Um, graduating 13 guys. Um, difficult to replace, but we have two of our returning starters from last year um, with me here tonight. But um, it's also nice, too, on the flip side, we play a little bit of a different style than Coach Chapman, so having a little bit of a clean slate makes it a little bit easier. Um, and just with these guys, it makes it a lot easier, too. And a, a different style, is that something that um – what, what are you keeping and what are some new things that you're trying to mix in this year for Firebird basketball? Coach Chapman was uh, definitely a defensive-minded coach, wanted to make sure that we were winning games in the 30s and 40s, um, depending on his personnel. But I think our style is a little bit more up-tempo, uh, winning in the 60s and 70s instead. Um, still having that emphasis that Coach Ch Chapman instilled too, uh, defense, the intensity, um, the player characters, making sure they're – uh, good students off the court as well as on the court, too. I mean, the other thing that seemed like uh, a hallmark of Holy Ghost prep basketball under Coach Chapman was hard work. Yep. And difficult, challenging practices. Is that something that um, you've kind of kept with the program, or is it uh, a little bit of a more player-friendly type of, uh, of attitude? I guess we should ask the guys. When yeah, we'll, we'll, ask, we'll ask the guys with us tonight. Sounds good. So, Coach, tell us who you brought with you tonight for the roundtable. So, to my right, we have senior Gavin McLaughlin, and then next to him we have junior Adrian Varela. All right, we'll talk to Gavin first. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Tell me a little bit about um, what you guys as a team feel like you're doing well right now and things that you need to improve on and get better at. Um, well, first of all, I think our transition offense is really good. We like to push the ball get out, get as many layups as possible. So I think that's working well for us. Um, what we need to work on, I'd say, is rebounding. We're not a very big team. We have one guy who's fairly tall. He's probably six seven, But um, other than that, we're pretty short. So, I mean, it's tough for us to rebound, but that's really the main thing we need to work on is just rebounding. And then if we can work on that, we can get out and transition better, and I think it all just will start clicking. All right, well, so far uh, this segment where I try to get an updated – basketball lingo going has has not worked out that great all right but I want to ask you to give me some fresh basketball lingo right so I don't sound like as much of an old guy as I am what would you what would you describe um a dunk like oh <laughs> like the old gold guy says that was a good uh slammer <laughs> I don't think we've had any <laughs> this year. I've never heard that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> slam a jam a ding dong. <laughs> a lot of people just, I mean, a lot of people say bang out, but like I, I just say dong. It, I mean, it's not really. No, I, that, not this is what I need. Bang out is probably like a more fresh <laughs> way to describe the play, and you know, like we got we got to appeal to the young people. So yeah. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> tell, tell me a little bit about your game um, and what the coach expects from you. Like, w what role do you feel like you fill on this Firebird team? Um, well, so we only have two seniors this year, so I think my main role is just really to, um, you know, like lead the guys in a way and um, just help the transition of varsity be easier. Uh, I think I do a good job of getting our teammates the ball, especially in, like, transition. I think that's my strong suit of my game is my passing. Um, I'm definitely a pass-first player. I wouldn't say scoring is my main ability, and I think that's really what I'm best at. 
I mean, still averaging 10 points per game and four assists uh, from what Coach shared with me. Uh, where do you think you guys need to go as a team uh, as far as, uh, again, Pensbury, some of these upcoming matchups, um, going up against Upper Dublin, for instance? W what do you guys need to clean up? I think we just – it's not as much cleaning up as if we need to bring the intensity anymore. I think when we're at our best, we're really good. Um, and we stay with a lot of teams. Look, we have stretches and games where we're keeping up with these really good teams. But I think it's intensity throughout the entire game is uh, what we need to work on and really just bringing the energy at all times, especially on the bench, on the court. Like. All right, new coach, new system, um, and, you know, new energy required by you guys. Right. How, how has that all been, the whole moving from – uh, legendary Coach Chapman to Coach Heston, and that succession seems like it's been pretty smooth, but always some some challenges with those changes. Right. Um, it's definitely been a – like, their, the play style for sure has been different, but I think um, we've been and, playing and over this good, like, do you like Is it a style that you've enjoyed playing more? I mean, it seems like it's more of a player-friendly style right. to be a little bit more up-tempo and not be so – defensive um, centric yeah um, yeah I like I think our, our play style has been working recently I like getting up and down it's just the fast place tempo of the game has been a lot easier for us and um, we're putting up points so that's all that really matters well Gavin thanks for being with us before we talk to Adrian uh, coach I did want to ask uh, some of the the coaches that are with us and uh, I missed the opportunity to ask coach Kelly about how the changing um, fouls in the PIAA potentially is changing your approach to a game or managing fouls. Again, I was telling everybody the old one and uh, one and one and one, one, one is done. Yep. And now you get two shots after you've um, gotten to five in each quarter. Yep. That is a, a different way to approach a game, or does it not change much for you? Yeah, it, it gives you a little bit of strategy going into it. Um, we're an aggressive defensive team. We like to pressure the ball. It helps us when we get different guys into the game. We go 10, 11, 12 guys deep. So it helps us with those guys who might not be getting uh, major minutes. They can be a little bit more aggressive. They can make an impact. Um, and then it just resets after the quarter. So it makes it a little bit easier strategy-wise. And it just kind of like helps out with the flow of the game too. But it's going to be interesting to see like how people um, – change their style or if there is any adjustment to the new foul situation in PIAA and uh, says here Gavin that you're going to be going to Villanova so I just want to wish you well uh, you can keep that with Adrian but uh, before we before we uh, transition to your teammate just want to wish you well at Nova and uh, the other note that I wanted to make on the show tonight right we did Council Rock North basketball uh, this past week and like past Saturday I think they played CB South and Coach Derek Wright is now back with the Indians on the boys' basketball side. He took over for Jesse Krasna, who left and is now coaching with Council Rock South. So a lot of transition over there with Council Rock North, but Coach Derek Wright is back with the Indians. He had spent 15 years with Council Rock basketball, so great to have him back. But I failed to mention that he is the brother of Jay Wright. I mean, I think everybody knows that probably. I like, think so. Everybody in the basketball world knows that, but potentially there were some people who were listening to the game that don't know that there's that Nova connection with Derek Wright and Council Rock and Nova and Jay Wright, which is kind of a cool thing and uh, some noteworthy certainly as Derek Wright back with Council Rock North, and we're hoping that they're going to join us maybe next week on the Coach's Corner Show. As now we uh, welcome Adrian here to the show. Welcome. Hey, hey. Welcome, welcome. All right, so tell me a little bit about your game um, and uh, like a little bit of a self scouting report. So I would definitely say like I'm a scorer and like also like I also like crash for rebounds on offense and defense, and I always like look to uh, advance the ball up in the transition to get easy points for like teammates and stuff. As a scorer, would you say you're more of a mid-range guy? You like to drive to the bucket, or um, you got, um, you know, some some range uh, from outside too. A little I'm, bit of a little bit of everything. I'm definitely like like going to the uh, basket more than like shooting my jump shot. If I had the jump shot, I would shoot it. But like I like good attacking the rim. 
So how do you feel like your team has come together this year? A lot of new, you know, get mentioned uh, you guys graduated 13 last year. Uh, it's got to be a, a little bit of a challenge to come together and figure out what everybody is, is good at doing and can contribute. It, yeah, it's, it's like, it's way different than we had last year. Um, having 13 seniors is like pretty easier than what we have now. Uh, we're like pretty, we're like younger, but like we still like try to like get the job done and like scoring and being tough with other teams. So I like, I give us credit for like standing our ground with other teams that have like seniors. A little more experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, not having as much experience on your team, Adrian, maybe has uh, required you to move up into a more, more of a leadership role this year. Can you tell me a little bit about um, how you're able to work with some of the guys who are a little bit don't have as much experience? Uh, sometimes I would like give them pointers out and like what like moves will work or like not to like force passes into like bad areas and like lead people in like trap areas. And, like, they would like take my pointers and like probably like use them sometimes, but I like giving them advice for them to like make things work for the team. So. Uh, how have you guys come together outside of um, on-court activities? Have you guys done, like, the spaghetti dinners? I, I'm guessing you guys probably have not had any sleepovers. <laughs> uh, no, we we had a, a party at Gavin's house one year. That would be weird. <laughs> yeah, right, they were talking about doing weird, it, though, so I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Holy Ghost uh, Holy Ghost guys. So, what, you, uh, Gavin had a party? Yeah, early this season. We went away to Elizabethtown for a team camp. Um, we had a team party at Gavin's house. Did a couple summer camps over there. Well, and um, then, I mean, it must have been a lot of work in the off season too. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how you guys um, came together even before your first game? Uh, we went to, like, Elizabethtown. Yeah. Where, like, we got to, like, get to know each other more because we, uh, we dormed in rooms with each other. So, like, I think that was, like, a great experience for us. And having to, like, know – having to um, – having the time to bomb with each other and getting to know what to do with each other. I think that was a really great time for all of us. All right, Adrian, maybe a lingo update. All right, you need to freshen up my style here. What if somebody had a a steal? Yeah. Got anything good? I mean, that's pretty – he stole the basketball. That's pretty <laughs> – like, you know, that doesn't have a lot of zest to it. No, I think that's pretty good. Nobody yeah. really used, like, a lingo for steals, but – I see, like, still, like, still the ball is pretty good. All right, hold on. Let, let me see what else do I got. What about an end one? All right, you oh. drive to the bucket, you make the shot, and you get to the line. Do you say, oh, I, I, I shot an end one? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Mm. I, need, I need to freshen up my lingo. No, like, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really, no, I don't really know no lingo for an end one, to be honest. I guess it, more like, uh, all the different ways you can describe it, like scoring through contact. It seems like that's part of your game, yeah. um, getting to the bucket, forcing mm -hmm. the issue. Yeah. Um, people so, people like saying, like, he's a baby or, like, <laughs> rocking a baby. I've, so. I've, I've seen that, like, this year, you know, guys, like, hit a three-pointer, and next thing you know, they're, like, rocking like, the baby. Or, like, he's too small. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give him, give him one of those, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, thank you so much for being with us tonight for the Coach's Corner, the Holy Ghost Prep Firebirds. And uh, we got their game against Pensbury on Saturday. Really looking forward to that as we'll be in Fairless Hills for that action. And uh, we got it for you on WBCB. All right, one more team to talk to. We got the Ben Salem Owls girls basketball team here at Sandy's Beef and Ale. They're coming up next. We'll step aside, take care of a couple of quick messages, and be back to talk more high school basketball on WBCB. Sandy's Beef and Ale has been serving famous hand-carved roast beef sandwiches since 1967. Sandy's Beef and Ale is located in the Woodburn Square Shopping Center next to the Oxford Valley Mall. Stop in anytime for not only the roast beef sandwiches, but also the patty, the tailgater, and the Cuban. Family and friends have been coming to Sandy's Beef and Ale since 1967. 2028 Old Lincoln Highway, the home of the hand-carved sandwich. 
Penn Community Bank, we're not just your bankers, we're your neighbors. That comes in handy when you're purchasing your first place, refinancing an existing mortgage, buying a second home or investment property, or looking to tap into your home's equity. Whatever your situation, we pair the latest products, services, and technology that you need with the experienced banking professionals you want. Visit PennCommunityBank.com or stop by your local branch to find out how we can make your family's growth personal. Penn Community Bank. Here we are and here we grow. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Your day-to-day -day life is hectic between having to pick up the kids, make dinner, the countless other tasks that you got to get done. Rob's Automotive Van Collision is there to make your life a whole lot easier. Make sure you take advantage of their spacious waiting rooms, the large flat-screen TVs, complimentary coffee and muffins, and free Wi-Fi. So even when you do have to stop, Rob's is there to make you feel right at home. Give Rob's a call today at 215-826-9200 for any of your auto repair needs. This is Tommy Green from the 1993 National League Champion Phillies. And here's the pitch. BCWSA Water and Sewer customers, you have a new and improved option to pay your bill that's convenient, reliable, and secure. Powered by Invoice Cloud, you can pay your bill 24-7 online, pay by text or phone, or sign up for auto pay to avoid fees for late or missed payments. Visit bcwsa.net to sign up or for more info. That's bcwsa.net. BCWSA, proven. Dion Square, located at South Oxford Valley Road and South Olds Boulevard, is a great place to shop and eat with the following businesses ready to serve you. The AutoZone, PA Wine and Spirits, CVS Pharmacy, The Hair Covering, Nationwide Insurance, Liberty Auto Tags, Smile Culture Dental, The First National Bank and Trust Company of Newtown, Lee's Hoagie House, and Pat Dion Beverages. We now return to Sandy's Beef and Ale in nearby Langhorn for the High School Coach's Corner. Once again, here is your host, Chris Ermer. Hey, thank you very much. Welcome back to Sandy's Beef and Ale, the home of the world-famous Sandy Witch. Great sandwiches. I love the roast beef, and they have their specialty sandwiches, the Cuban, the tailgater. Right now they're doing a sausage, pepper, and onion, which is a new thing here at Sandy's Beef and Ale. Big thanks to Dave, to Jane, to all the staff for hosting the High School Basketball Coaches right. Corner on WBCB. And with us now, the Ben Salem Owls, Coach Steve Johnson, and a couple of his players. Welcome, Coach. Thanks Thank for you. being with us tonight. Thanks for having us. We appreciate it. All right, so the Owls have won some really close games. Uh, I think it was a one-point win over Council Rock North. Mm -hmm. um, I think you guys got into Chamonix by a point. Uh, we lost in a Chamonix this year. Now we, we just beat CB East by three points on okay. Friday, which was a big win for us. So uh, what's the key to um, having success? It seems like in addition to uh, you guys have played in a lot of close games. Mm -hmm. like yeah, I think, uh, I think the big thing, so Amber, Amber's a senior here and Talia's a junior. I started uh, with Amber. So when we were fresh, when she was a freshman, it was my first year. <coughs> and the first couple years, we took our lumps to teams in our league and even teams we played out of our league. Um, you know, double digit losses, some, you know, bigger than 15, 20 points. I think the big thing the, this last season and this year is just kind of believing that we belong with, with teams like, you know, Neshaminy, the Pensburys, the Council Rocks, the CBs. Um, you know, we, we may not win every game, but. My, my big thing for these girls is just to believe that we can compete with those teams. I mean, you look at those scores. You guys have been in every single game mm -hmm. that you guys have played pretty much. Ben pretty Salem much, yeah. with us, 6-4 and four overall this uh, this year, 4-3 and three in the league. Uh, CB South coming up for you. Uh, what are you telling your players about uh, that matchup and just overall what you need yeah. to do to continue to um, – be competitive in the league and you know position yourself yeah. for district play. So um, I give these girls all the credit. They come to practice and they they pay attention. They're locked in. They they listen to the scout. Um, I think against CB East and CB South, I think we had a solid scout. Um, we watched enough film. We talked to them today about kind of what stuff CB South likes to run. Um, so Talia and Amber are going to have their hands full, uh, but we practiced hard today. We're ready to go. Um, basically, just locking in on defense. And the big thing is to communicate especially with when you play teams that move the ball well, um, you know, set screens, off ball screens. We've got to be able to communicate with each other. So we worked on that today, and um, I think we had a good practice. Um, I think actually we had a great practice, so I think we're ready to go tomorrow. Well, CB South tomorrow, Wissahickon on Saturday for the Ben Salem Owls. Coach, tell us about your basketball journey. 
one of the things that seems noteworthy um, in the local high school basketball scene, there's a lot of coaches that have been with their program for like less than five years. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, Wes Emmy for Pensbury is relatively new. I mean, there's a lot of coaches mm -hmm. that are in their first or second year. Mm -hmm. Tell me what, um, what what brought you to Ben Salem yeah. and um, what, what, what yeah. your basketball journey was yeah. like. Uh, this may sound corny and cliche, but I, I definitely bleed blue. I graduated from Ben Salem in class of 2013. I played basketball for Coach Mullen. Um, I played basketball my whole life, did my student teaching in Ben Salem. Um, so I basically bleed blue. So I knew that I wanted to get into coaching. I knew the only place I would want to coach at would be Ben Salem. So um, I was an assistant for under Sheldon Purr for a year. And then Coach Purr uh, had enough of coaching. I mean, he's won hundreds of games. So he felt like passing it down to someone. Uh, applied for the job and got it. And I couldn't be happier to be uh, the Ben Salem girls coach. Well. I'm an Ashamity graduate, ooh, and we ooh. do a we have ton. To switch seats, Amber. Can we, we switch seats, Amber? We do a lot of Pensbury games yeah. on WBCB, mm -hmm. but my heart is with the Ben Salem Owls. My daughter is a junior and on the swim team, oh, so I, awesome. uh, I bleed blue yeah. a little bit, too. There we too. go. And uh, especially cool. now with my yeah. daughter at uh -huh. Ben Salem High School. Awesome. And so uh, I'm rooting for you guys, loving to see what the boys' basketball mm -hmm. team has been doing mm -hmm. atop the SOL Patriot Division. And, uh, Coach, thank you for being with us and bringing your players and everything yeah. and, and doing what you do for Blue. Absolutely. We wouldn't miss it. I'm glad that, um, you know, you made us a part of it, added basketball this year. Um, it was great watching. You know, we play against Council Rock North two times a year, but seeing those girls up here, um, you know, who I usually coach against, get to see them up here joking around with each other. And at the end of the day, it's just, you know, publicity for the kids. So I'm happy that they get to be here. All right. Well, let's talk to your players. Uh, Coach, tell us fun. who you brought with you tonight. All right. So first I brought Amber. Amber's a senior. Um, like I said, she started with me here. Um, and as you kind of alluded to when we were talking beforehand, you know, Amber was always a name being thrown around freshman and sophomore year. Oh, watch out. This kid can play. She's going to be a special player for Ben Salem, you know, so years to come. Varsity starter right away. Yeah. Uh, started uh, since a freshman. And now she's committed to play basketball at North Carolina A&T next year on a full basketball scholarship. So we're really excited Thank for you. that. Yeah. That is awesome. And I don't know. I wouldn't say this is – this is cooler because that's probably the best thing ever, get, getting to go to college debt-free. Debt uh, but just yesterday, two days ago, uh, she got nominated for the McDonald's All-American Games. So that's that's awesome as well. So, you know. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Congratulations, yeah. Amber, thank and uh, yeah. welcome to the show. Thanks for being with us. Uh, what did that news um, – what did you think when you heard you might be a McDonald's All-American? Yeah, it was great. Um, it was kind of – I was kind of like – just shocked because it all like kind of happened out of nowhere. I wasn't really thinking about it until it happened. But it's like a big achievement, especially like being the first person in Ben Salem history to like be nominated. That was like made me proud, like proud of myself. So that's great. Well, we're proud of you as well, Thank you. and we're hoping the best uh, for you in the future and uh, the best uh, you know spot at at, at uh, NCA and T and everything. Well, what do you think the the key is for you guys to achieve the goals that you've set for yourself this season? Like, forget about next year and all that other stuff in your future. McDonald's All American, awesome stuff. Mm -hmm. But what do you guys need to do to um, achieve your your goals this year? I think we need to just trust each other, play together. You know, because once we stop doing that. It, it's hard for it's harder for us. The game's harder, but I feel like if we play together, we trust each other. We play all four quarters, and nice. it's gonna be we're gonna be a good team. A has that good team. <laughs> has that been a little bit of a challenge for you guys, where you play good in like three quarters? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, but um, I feel like since this Christmas tournament that we had, it's been like way better because we kind of we had one loss where it was like if we would have played all four quarters, like, balls to the wall, then we probably would have won that game because we were down a lot, and then we came back. And then I think we lost by, like, one, I one, think it, I think one it was, two. Was it three? Three, it was three, three. Yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, but that kind of set the tone for the rest of the games after that. So. Well, they are the Ben Salem Fighting Owls this mm -hmm. season here go. and uh, fighting their way through this high school basketball <laughs> season. Um, Amber also in spring track. Yeah. Has that is that something new for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, so I have AU during spring, so 
I kind of did track for like a little bit and then went on to like AU because I couldn't do both. But this year, I'm going to be fully committed to track. <laughs> That's going to be my goal to <laughs> do the whole yeah. spring track for the whole for the whole spring. Oh, that's awesome, me bringing your best to Ben Salem, yeah. helping helping the owls out. All right, so um, as, as you get ready for the the rest of this season and everything, and uh, upcoming, where you, when you look at your game, wh how would you scout yourself, or what would you um, say you do well, and um, where are some elements where you feel like you need to improve on a little bit? I would say I do well attacking to the basket, getting like getting good position. I feel like I need to work on finishing more. And because a lot of teams take charges on me, so I feel like I need to be more, like, yeah. aware of that gotcha. and be more control of myself during the games because they take charge and the refs call everything. So <laughs> Got that right. Uh, All right, so second that. Let's get a lingo update, all right? Um, <sighs> trying to freshen up what I'm, what, how I'm able to describe this game of basketball, all right? I can't say – Oh, they shot a three-pointer. I need to say from downtown and uh, from beyond the arc and stuff mm -hmm. like that. A lot of people say tray ball. Like with a three-pointer, they say tray ball. All right, so I, th that, that'll help me. All yeah. right, but that's like that's that's like rare. Like you won't hear that a lot, but a lot of people say that though. The other challenge that you have when you're like a 50-year-old guy is that you don't want to like use really really young lingo mm -hmm. and sound like you're like kind of like a goofball. All right, but yeah. tray ball, I think I could fit that yeah. in. You get away with that. We do, a lot, we do a lot of, like, hand signals, too. Like, we do this, like, three for three. The boys do this. This is, like, a new one. I, I thought this was four fingers. <laughs> I love you. And I, I, hey, you know that, right? And I just hit a three-pointer. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's our boys thing. Coach Morris <laughs> and the boys do that a ton, and that's what it means. So, H How about, like, uh, a block? I know you, as a yeah, defender, you've come up that. with some blocks yeah. <laughs> in your day. There, I don't think there's nothing for that. No, not for me. I don't. Yeah, there's no lingo for that. I don't think. Just rejected. <laughs> rejected. That's what I go with. Rejected. Yeah, well, that, you can use that. That lingo might be yeah. rejected. I should just say <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a good block. All right, hey, we have only a, a few more minutes left, so pass the, that headset on there to your go. teammate. Be, thanks to Amber for being with us tonight. Yeah. And uh, thanks to Talia, who also is our guest on the Coach's Corner. Welcome to the show, Talia. Thanks and for having me. So also a volleyball player. Seems like you're very busy at Ben Salem. How do you manage um, to put in the work on the basketball floor as well? Um, well, basketball is definitely like my main sport. So it's like I am very busy, but I always put basketball first. So if I have other things, I always put basketball first. And I'm always going to make sure I get to there first. Amber averaging 16 points per game, and Talia at 10 points per game, four rebounds per game. Tell us a little bit about uh, what what role you fill on this team for, for the Ben Salem Owls. Um, well. <laughs> like, are you like an outside shooter? Yeah, well, uh, so last year in like my freshman year, um, I was more so of a shooter. But we lost our point guard, so this year I had to kind of fill that role of being point guard. So, I mean, I still shoot a lot, but, yeah, more of a guard this year, point guard. I mean, how, how has that transition been? Is that something um, that you've enjoyed, or has it made you um, change your game? And um, At first, I didn't really like it. Yeah. I didn't. I just wanted to be a shooter. But, I mean, I kind of grew to, like, like it now. Like, it's kind of like I have to do what's best for my team. So, Yeah. I mean, if it's in the t my team's best interest and I got to do what I got to do. And it's all about picking up W's and keeping this momentum going. How do you do that? What are you hearing from your coaches? What are some things, um, like, team-wide that uh, you guys feel like if you just um, get a little bit better in this one area, clean up this or that? Um, like Amber said, just, like, playing all four quarters. Like, we do good things all around but like we never do it consistently like throughout the whole game so I think just like staying like having high energy the whole time will like is what's going to lead us to more wins. All right we're talking about um, bleeding blue and Ben Salem and everything you're on the blue crew yeah but <laughs> I, my daughter goes I don't what is the blue crew? It's just like organizing like events for the school so like oh, that's cool. during lunch we'll do like tailgates and stuff like we'll set up 
activities for people to get more involved who like aren't in like sports and stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Go Blue Crew, <laughs> and, and go Ben Salem. Uh, again, uh, our first coach's corner here on WBCB. Thanks to the Ben Salem girls basketball team, to the Holy Ghost Prep Firebirds, and uh, also to Council Rock North for being with us tonight. We hope to have more schools next time. Again, we're laying out the welcome mat, an invitation for coaches. If you want to come out and uh, highlight your players, give us an opportunity to talk to them a little bit, please do. We're going to be here for the next couple of weeks. And who knows where we go from here on the Coach's Corner. Big thanks to Sandys for uh, hooking us up again on WBCB. Thanks to Gus Barber, our video engineer, always doing a great job. And thanks to Keith Noonan, who's back at our WBCB studios for turning the dials and keeping us on the air. And thanks to you for being with us here. And uh, we'll do it again next week. More Coach's Corner action from Sandys Beef and Ale next Wednesday on the WBCB Sports Network. See you then. Go out.